Well, we've travelled quite far on our introductory differential calculus course. You've been able to differentiate functions, but what about relationships? As of the end of today's episode, you will be able to do implicit differentiation, and you will be able to find the slope of the tangents on circles and many other different things using these simple laws and rules. So, let's get ready. Implicit differentiation is very similar to the differentiation rules we already know. It's just a matter of having that extra y variable in there. In case you don't know what implicit means, it just means that we're looking at relationships now. It means that x's and y's can exist on the same side of the equation. That is an example of an implicit relationship. A circle is an example of an implicit relationship. It is a relationship where we can have x's and y's on the same side of the equation, and uh, it's a relationship rather than a function because we can have multiple x values for one y value, so we can have multiple inputs result in one output. And that's why we have implicit differentiation. It's important, because not everything's a function. So, let me introduce you to this one little rule before we begin. y prime, so the derivative of y, whenever we differentiate a y term, we must give it with respect to x. So, we actually include a dy dx in there. We multiply by dy dx to that term that has that y in there. And that will become a little bit more apparent in my videos I do. Um, and again, implicit differentiation is something that will take a lot of practice, so I really recommend having a go at several examples. We're going to look at two today, just to get our heads around it. So, if I just clear the board, I'll set up the first example of implicit differentiation, and we'll be able to learn as we go along. Okay, so let's say we had the function, or should I say the relationship, sorry, but xy plus 3x plus 5y equals 9. We have x's and y's on the same side of the equation. That is a good sign that we need to use implicit differentiation. Of course, we might be able to rearrange it, but given the fact we have multiple y values, it's probably just easier to actually differentiate it implicitly. So now we need to identify what kind of rules we're going to use here. We know the differentiation rules now. We even know e and natural log, but they're not involved in this particular example. But uh, think back to sum rule, product rule, quotient rule, all of those rules we learned. And because we've got pluses in here, we can see that the overarching rule we're going to use is sum rule. And the sum rule states we just differentiate each term individually. We differentiate that one, that one, and that one with respect to x. And also we differentiate the other side as well. But we know now that the derivative of a constant is going to be zero. Okay, so what we do is we simply say, well, if we've got that there, and I'll just get rid of the zero just momentarily, but if we've got that there, we need to look at each term and what rule we can apply. For these two, it might not be as obvious, but we can just use a simple power rule because we have a coefficient and a term present. And we don't have anything multiplied or subtra uh, divided or subtracted in there. But for the first rule, we actually need to use product rule. Because x is multiplied by y. And they're two different terms. x is not the coefficient of y, it's a variable. And because we have two variables together multiplied, it has to be the product rule. That's an easy way to identify it. So once we've identified those little components that make it up, we need to actually go through and do the whole thing. So that's what I'm going to do now. With the product rule, you might remember it, we need to differentiate the first term first, then leave the second term as is, then it's just add on the uh, actual second term differentiated, and the first term as it is. So if I were to write this out, and you probably remember it from a previous video, 
But if we have the sum function h of x, um, in fact, yes, the h prime of the f of x gx, so again, f of x is just like having x and g of x is just like having y, but if we want to take the derivative of that, then we would end up with the h prime, uh, f, sorry, the f prime of x gx plus the g prime of x fx. Again, they get differentiated one side on the equation, so both the first one gets differentiated and the second one. And of course, we've got that variable y in there as well. So that's the product rule in the generic form, but we need to consider how y affects the result too. Uh, but I'll come to that in just a moment. Let's actually just first think about uh, going through this first term. So what we do is we differentiate the first term, and the x prime of 1, so the derivative of x is just 1. Because remember that x is raised to the power of 1. It has an imaginary coefficient out the front of 1. So when we bring the exponent down to the coefficient, it becomes 1 times 1, which makes just 1. So it's 1x to the power of 0, and x to the power of 0 is 1, so it's 1 times 1. So the x prime is going to be equal to 1. We start off with 1, and then we rewrite the second term as it is. We don't need to differentiate y. So we just end up with y, or 1y. I'm just going to write y because it's simpler. And then what we do is we add on, and then we leave the first term as is, but we need to take the derivative of the second term. And this is the very first time that we differentiate a non-x variable in this season. So I think that is something very special. But uh, because it's just y, we take y prime, and y prime is just giving respect to x. So we just write it as x multiplied by dy on dx. Because, as I had up on the board before, y prime is equal to dy of dx. And again, even if you differentiate something like, uh, for example, 5y on the end here, it's just a matter of differentiating it as you normally would, um, and then doing dy dx on the end if it does still involve a y term but I'll come to that a little bit later. So now we've got y plus x dy dx. We then differentiate the second term, and that's just free x. So we know that that's, of course, just going to be free, because that's x to the power of 1. We bring the 1 down, it becomes 3 times 1, which is free, and then it becomes x to 0, and anything to 0 is 1. So we get 3 there. And then it's the same with the y here. And because we don't actually have a y in our end result, our differentiated term, it's just going to be 5 here. And we get that expression. So now, we simply have y plus x times dy dx plus 8 equals 0. And so what we do is we move some of these terms to the other side. So I'm going to move, I'm going to keep the dy dx term on this side because it's nice and easy, so dy dx times x. Then I'm going to move these to the other side, and because they're plus, they're going to be minus on the other side. So we end up with negative y take, take 8. And what we can actually do is, because we just have that dy dx times x there, we just need to inverse the operation. So because it's in the numerator on this side, it's going to be in the denominator on that side, and we get that our derivative of this implicit relationship is negative y take 8 on x. It's as simple as that. Again, just remember, if you see a y, you need to give respect to x. And, of course, with this, you also need to consider getting dy dx on its own, isolating it using those rules of algebra that you already know. And now, we're going to go on to another example, slightly more complex, involves a bit more y here and there. So, Without further ado, we'll start the second example, and we'll analyse it. Again, implicit differentiation does take practice, and it's not something you may necessarily get overnight, but uh, hopefully this video will get you on the right track once I uh, show you a second, more detailed and more challenging example. So, we have y to the power of 3 plus 5x squared plus 2 bracket x plus y equals 3. 
And uh, just to let you know, we could potentially have like Y's and X's on this side as well if we wanted to. I'm going to keep it reasonably easy for today, and I'm going to save that for a more challenging end of uh, unit course, which we're probably going to do in the next episode anyway. Uh, but in terms of differentiating this, we need to identify the main underlying components. And uh, as we can see here, we've got some rule because all those terms are added together, all those expressions. And uh, what we have here is we've got power rule, we've got another power rule, and here we've also technically got another power rule. They're all based around power rule. However, this one here, um, we need to expand out. However, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So it's important you identify the components. Now, some people might get a little bit confused here, because they might think, oh, it's product rule, we have multiplication, that's what the bracket means. And yes, we do have multiplication, but um, when we actually solve it outward by expanding, it turns out we only get a term or a variable with a coefficient there. We don't actually get two different things multiplied by each other. So um, just be careful. Generally, if you have something like this, 5xy, um, then you would get that, but not always. Again, it depends on the actual um, result you have in there, and there will be some more challenging ones with implicit differentiation that I'll show you in a later video. But uh, just for today, this one, again, it just involves a little bit of thought, so we'll uh, go through it. And we differentiate the first term, y to the 3. So we bring that 3, that exponent, down into the position of the coefficient, and we get 3y, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we get 3y squared. Now, this is something very, very important. I've said it a few times in this video before, but whenever we have a y, we must give respect to x. So we must multiply by the dy on dx. Give respect to x. It deserves it. And then what we do is we need to actually apply the power rule to the second term. We bring the 2 down to the position of the 5. 5 times 2 is 10, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we have 10x. And now we need to expand this last term. So we've got, if I just write it up here, 2x plus y, so we get 2x plus 2y there. As you can see, I've just expanded out like that, using distributive law. And uh, what we get is from that, we just get 2 plus 2, because again, they're not raised to any power. And because they're not raised to any power, we can just write their coefficient, because that's what they'll be when they're differentiated. Again, I've said uh, how the 1 take 1 equals 0, and anything to the power of 0 is 1. So you should be able to catch on to that now in the future, whenever I say it in future videos. Okay, so we can simplify this expression, and of course it equals 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. Remember the flat line example I gave? There's no change in y relative to change in x. But uh, what we do is we actually say, well, okay, we can simplify a little bit. We can join those two twos together to make four. And then what we do is we actually bring these terms to the other side of the equation. And because they're positive on that side, they're going to be negative on the other side. So we get 3y squared times dy dx equals negative 10x take 4. And then, because this is just multiplied by dy dx, in order to get rid of it, we just divide on the other side. So what we, do, what we end up getting is dy on dx equals negative 10x take 4 on 3y squared. And it's as simple as that. Now, I just want to change this slightly, because I want to show you an example where we end up with two dy on dx's on the other side of the equation. In order to do this, I'll just amend the one we've currently got, so we can go through it quickly. But I'm going to make this y term here to the power of 3. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we've got y to the power of 3 in there. Well, we know what the derivative of the first term is. It's 3y squared times dy dx. We know that from the last example. We also know that this is plus 10x, because we differentiated using the power rule. But this last bit has now changed because of that power, and because of it, something else is going to happen. We're going to get a more challenging example of rearranging algebra and using algebraic knowledge with calculus. 
So, if we have 2x plus y to the 3, then when we expand that out, we get 2x plus 2y to the 3. Just multiply all the terms by 2. So, um, as a result, what we want to differentiate is these last two terms. Now, because we just have a coefficient and x, you know what's going to happen. It's just going to be the coefficient left over when we differentiate. And now, with this one here, 2y to the 3, we just bring that 3 down and multiply it by 2, so it becomes 6y squared times dy dx. Again, we subtract 1 from the power, and because it's y, we must give respect to x through dy dx. And all of this is, of course, going to equal 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. Whoa! Now we've got something. We've actually got two terms that involve dy dx. Hmm. Well, let's see. We can actually isolate a common factor in algebra. It's pretty easy. It's what we've actually got here. Before, we could actually write 2x plus 2y to the 3, but then we could actually condense it into this form, couldn't we? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can actually condense it. And uh, the, re the, the common factor between these two terms here is a dy dx. So if we leave them on one side of the equation and move the others to the other side of the equation, we can write dy dx out the front of the bracket. Okay, so let, let's do this. We've got plus 10x and we move it to the other side, so it's going to be negative 10x. And then we've got plus 2, move it to the other side, it's going to be negative 2 equals uh, 3y squared times dy dx plus 6y squared times dy dx. And again, because they both include dy dx, we can just put both of these terms in a bracket plus each other, just like we had there. So we get negative 10x take 2 equals dy dx, and then in brackets, 3y squared plus 6y squared. And then, it's simple. Because those two things are multiplied by each other, we just plop that down to there in the denominator, because again, it's in the numerator on this side, so it's going to be in the denominator on the other side. You should remember that from algebra. But we will end up with negative 10x take 2 on 3y squared plus 6y squared equals our derivative of this relationship. So now, not only can you differentiate natural logs and exponents and all those major rates of change, you can also differentiate relationships like hyperbolas and circles. You never know where this will actually fit in in the real world. Maybe you want to know, like, the slope of a wheel or something like that. There are many great applications, and I'd really recommend that you practice your differentiation skills and implicit differentiation skills, because in the next episode, we're going to be going through a few more challenging concepts. But that's all for now. Have fun, and remember to implicitly differentiate safely.